Another time in the Word of God from uh, Victory Life Church here in the city of Kelowna. I want to talk to you again about identity theft. And identity theft prevention is what I'm talking about today. How do we retain or keep the enemy away from taking what God wanted for us? Yes, God wanted something wonderful for us. And uh, I found a scripture today that, uh, again, tells me that... Uh, you know, most believers are not where God wants them to be. You know, I'm not saying that uh, while there's a good, the perfect, the acceptable will of God, but most people, you could tell by their interest, by what is driving them, their passion, it's not for the things of God on the level where God wants it. And I can, I know the difference. I know the men of God that are hot for God, that protect the anointing. We shared that on Sunday, that know who they are. And they, you know, they are separated from the world and they're doing things for God and they're rising up and leading a generation. And I've desired to be one of them. I want to be there. You know, I'm not saying I'm a great minister or anything like that, but I'm saying I know to separate myself and do for the call of God on my life. And I'm seeing things in the Word of God that I'm sharing with you that will get you to a higher level. Amen. I, and I covered these things last week. Let me just touch on a few of them where, you know, Jesus went into the wilderness and after he was, uh, the dove descended on him and he heard, well, down the good, you know, that, that you are the son of God. I'm well pleased with you. He right away went into the wilderness and the devil tempted him and said, are you the son of God? And if you be the son of God, then do this and this and that. And so Jesus had had the devil pull on his identity. And we know how often he would say in the word of God, you know, the father and I are one. The father and I are one. Well, you know, he wasn't leaving that position, which is what he identified with, which means identity is establishing or indicating who or what someone or something is. Do you identify Jesus as the son of God? If not, then you aren't saved. He is a son of God in flesh. The Bible says, you know, the spirit that does not say that is of the Antichrist. And so we identify with, with, with uh, number one, I'm in the body of Christ, but I understand he is a son of God. He came to redeem me. And a lot of people, once they are redeemed, do not possess or uh, uh, um, find it as important to obtain what he said we need to obtain. And uh, the scripture I want to first go to is in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Chapter 3, verse 1, it says, However, brethren, I could not talk to you as spiritual men, but as non-spiritual men of the flesh, in whom the carnal nature predominantly predominates. It is... So important, you know, my golf game, my, you know, my pleasure, my camping, my everything, you know, everything is great. Oh yeah, we go to church on Sunday one hour. That's, that's not what it's all about. It is growing in a nurture and admonition of the Lord, becoming as he said, now are you called the sons of God. And so it says again back here, it says where the carnal nature predominates as to mere infants in the new life of Christ. And so I'm looking at that saying, no, I don't want to be that. I, I've, I've been there. I don't want to be that. I don't want to constantly, you know, have a service where we're constantly, re, you know, and again, we do uh, always ask the Lord for forgiveness. But if it's always like, you know, draw near to God, come and repent, you know, rather than living the victorious life of God, you know, above just always barely, are you okay with God? Did you come into the things of God? Did you make Jesus Christ the Lord? There should be services like that, but there's also believer services where we take apart the word of God and it becomes life and liberty and healing. I mean, the Bible says, here's what Paul says. All right, it says in Philippians 1.21, it says, For me to live is Christ, and to uh, die is even gain. So he had a revelation. Everything evolves around the anointing 
Christ is the anointing and the anointed one. And Jesus is the one we concentrate on. How did he function? What did he do? How does, Paul says, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. Not just know him. Okay, Jesus, you know, and, and you know, you're there and I'm just the little guy that got saved. No, he says he wants to know the power of the resurrection. He wants to know Jesus, what did you call? He says in Corinthians, it says that we, we carry this power in earthen vessels. What for? Why did we have that transition from being a sinner into being saved by grace? Now we are renewed on the inside so that Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's where we got to live as believers. That's what we're going to obtain to. That's, what we're, that's why the Bible says, when he appears, we shall be like him. And so we got to grow up. Follow 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, chapter 2, the whole chapter has to do with spiritual things versus the carnal things. And so we want to grow up. Say, I want to grow up. I want to grow up in the things of God. I want the things of God to be so important to me. I want to be like Smith Wigglesworth where he said, I don't even want that newspaper in my house. Why? He was so in tune with not uh, uh, messing with the anointing and not um, grieving the Holy Spirit by reading the trash of the day. He wanted one thing and it wasn't the just the pleasures of this world. You know, and there's nothing wrong with having good times and stuff like that. But predominantly, you and I are children of the Most High God, no sons and daughters of God. We covered that last week already. And so I just want to read a few more. It says uh, in Romans chapter 8, he's not ashamed for uh, to call us his brethren. Amen. So that's a real important one. Uh, he is not, Jesus is not ashamed to call us his brethren. Um, let me go to that scripture in Romans chapter 8, verse, I believe it's 29. Oh, this is so important. It says, it says, for those whom he foreknew, to whom he was aware and beloved beforehand, he also destined, say destined, uh, from the beginning. So don't, don't be one of those carnal people that, that, ha that, that can't be fed more of the Word of God because you're just not interested in it. You know, obtaining a certain level and just, you know, he, Paul said it. He says, I can't feed you the spiritual stuff. You're like babes and you run around in this babe class. You know, this grade one all the time where he wants us to graduate to higher things. So he says he, but we are predestined. He was destined from the beginning uh, to for, uh, for, for ordain them to be molded into the image of his son and share inwardly his likeness that he might become the firstborn from among many brethren. And if that's the case, what would a brethren like that look like? Let's go back to John chapter 15. Um, what, what would a brethren like that do? What it would look like if I'm molded into Jesus and he's really there close with me. Christ's spirit is within me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. What would I look like? What would I act like? What would be the purpose of it in my life? Well, the truth comes out in John chapter 15. It uh, dropped down to, well, first of all, it says in verse 1, I am the true vine, and the fa my Father is the vine dresser. Any branch in me that does not bear fruit, that stops bearing, he puts or cuts away, trims off, takes away, and he cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch Guess who's the branch? You. Where are we stuck? On the tree. That's how far is a branch away from a tree? They're intertwined. They're one. Uh, it says, you are cleansed and already pruned because of the word which I have given you. So that was his desire, get, desire to get in the word. Now watch this here. You, verse 4, dwell in me and I dwell in you. See, that's our identity. Anything less is not the fulfilled plan of God for my life. I in you and you in me, says Jesus. 
Amen? We're going to do something together. We're going to do the works of the ministry. Christ in me. Lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. We are the extension of his hands. And the devil, right from the beginning, he's a thief. He wants to come take your identity. Who do you think you are? You can't do that. You know, he couldn't get after Jesus, so he's got the body of Christ to harass and try to criticize and try to put down and try to, you know, have uh, divisions and schisms in the body of Christ. Those are all of Satan trying to affect. We should be thanking God for every new church in town, thanking God for every church that's, you know, much bigger than ours. And, you know, just glory to God. Everybody's working on the same team. We're not in competition. We're here to help each other. Amen. Preach the word. And it all is stems from we're on the tree with Jesus. Dwell in me and I will dwell in you. Live in me and I will live in you. How's that possible? If I'm just a sinner, you know, I'm just a worm down here. See, that's the wrong identity. But so many people preach that, you know, that, you know, you just can't, don't expect too much, you know, you sin all the time or, or, you know, just in heaven, it'll be worth it all. No, it's worth it now. I'm born again now. Romans 8 says, I have the down payment of the Holy Spirit. Go back to there. Romans chapter 8, watch this here. It says, for even the whole creation, all of nature. This is verse 19, chapter 18. Uh, eight. It says, for even the whole creation, all nature waits, waits. What's that? That's here on this planet. Waits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's sons to be made manifest, to be made known. They want to get to know us. You know, a guy like Wigglesworth, who is one of the greatest evangelists, like, you know, your Kenneth Hagins, Kenneth Copeland, all these great men of God, Reinhard Bunke, I, they fill stadiums like Reinhard does for a million people, supported by Kenneth Copeland Ministry. You know, uh, there was trains that could not come in, pull into the station, because they knew w w w Wigglesworth was on a train. So they covered the tracks just to hear the man of God speak. Boy, does it, that was, that's, that's the kind of, wow, because Christ in them, the hope of glory. But can I tell you something? He's in me too. He's in you too. Maybe you don't have those kind of numbers in, when you preach, but can you identify with the fact the Son is in you? Christ in me, the hope. Watch this here. It keeps on saying, it says, they're waiting, expecting for it, longing earnestly for God's sons to be made known, waiting for the revealed and the disclosed of the sonship, which again is, is sons and people, not being little babies, as it says in Corinthians, but they're manifesting the glory of God in these last days. They're, they're standing on the stage, and, and I've seen it just the other day, the power of God. People were just falling with the power of God. People were healed. Signs and wonders, blind eyes open. You know, just wonderful things of God. That's not just a like few. That's the, the, the ones that chose Jesus. He chooses them. The ones that say, pick me, Lord, choose me. And start d d um, just, uh, number one, not letting the devil steal your identity. I know in whom I have believed. And I know he's able. You know, says the Apostle Paul, I know who I'm, I, I, I'm hooked up with and so forth. And so it goes on to say, um, verse 20, I read verse 19. Uh, they're waiting expectantly for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creation, nature was subject to frailty and futility and condemnation and, condemnation and frustration. Uh, um, not because, actually I want to go back to verse 18. Let me go to there first. It says, it says, uh, it says, I consider that the sufferings of the present times, the present life, are not worth being compared to the glory, watch this here, the glory that is about to be revealed on us and in us and for us and conferred on us. That, that, that's the, the important verse I want to get to here. Before 19, that all the world is waiting for us, it says, I'm going to read it again, the, that the, the, press, the suffering, of course there's going to be suffering when the enemy knows that, wow, if I can't shut him down, he's going to manifest. <laughs> We're going to manifest the glory of God. 
That's my identity. We're Christ in us, the hope of glory. Can you say that? Run around your kitchen and say it ten times. Christ in me, the hope of glory. You say, yeah, but I'm just a housewife. Or I just work at, you know, 7-Eleven. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know, that's your platform. But you've got to know, don't let him take your identity. That he is in you. I'm going to read that again. I'm so excited about this here. It says that... Uh, uh, the, what the suffering is not worth it compared to the glory that is about to be revealed on us. The what? The glory. Glory, glory, glory. Say that. The glory is going to be revealed on us. The glory is going to be revealed on me. I'm identifying with a person that has a glory on us. And in us. And for us. And conferred to us. Romans 8, verse 18 and 19. Woo! Glory to God. So we're, we're, uh, that, that relates to... You know, we're going to be bearing fruit, which comes out in John chapter 15, uh, verse 7. Um, you can read the whole chapter. But I just, I'm just rushing here. If you live in me, abide vitally united to me. Well, guess what's going to happen? You're going to know him. And the glory on us, conferred on us, in us, all over us. The glory. Why would I want that? Because that's where the power is in manifestation. And that is what happens when we get into the Word of God, settle down in the Word of God. Do not let the identity thief steal our identity and start saying, I am plugged into the vine and the vine is plugged into me. I uh, want to go to just one more scripture because I want to share with you how to prevent the enemy from stealing. Oh, John 17 is so good. It says, uh, watch this here. I have given them my glory. Verse 22. So do you identify with the carnal nature? As it says in Corinthians, I can't talk to you like spiritual beings because the carnal nature is predominant. No, I identify with being spiritually minded. I want to fulfill, number one, obviously it's you have to have a clean vessel, a vessel that, that has uh, forgiven and is forgiven, has made Jesus Christ the Lord of the, their lives. Now we press on to the mark of the high calling. The mark of the high calling. Amen. Would you say that this is a high calling? I have given them my glory. Verse 22 of John 17. That they may be one even as we are one. I in them, you in me, in order that they may become one and perfectly united, that the world may know and definitely uh, recognize that you sent me. What did Jesus do when he was sent? That recognize that you sent me. He went around healing and doing good and, uh, you know, destroying the works of the devil. All right, so that's what Jesus did. Guess what his body is doing? It's doing the same thing. Going around, uh, healing the sick, cleansing the, the, the lepers, casting out devils, and uh, glorifying God. Amen. So he says, I want to be this close to these people. I want in them, they in me. I want their glory. I want it to flow through them. That's why he says, I'm leaving you my glory. Read John 17, 22 on. You know, oh, it's just so good. So good. All of it is good. This is not for the faint of heart. This is not for the weak believer. Now, let me go back there where it says, I, however, brethren, I could not talk to you as to spiritual men, but as to non-spiritual men of the flesh. Men of the flesh in whom the carnal nature is predominant, and to mere infants in the new life in Christ. So guess what? We all grow up. We all came in and said, yes, Jesus, be my Lord. But we've got to end up with the knowing that he's in me and I'm in him, and that he has given us his glory so that, and, he, and I'll repeat this verse 23 of John 17, I in them and you in me, in order that they might become one and perfectly united. I shared on Sunday, that's when we're all in unity, that's when the power of God comes down, as it says in Second Chronicles. And, uh, and so we were there on Sunday. That, so all of them in one unity, that the world may know and definitely recognize that you sent me and that you have loved 
even them as you have loved me. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So that is all in, you know, us doing the work of the ministry now that Jesus has left. He says, I want to be re recognized in these people, like it says, that you sent me, Father. So guess what we do? We do the works that he did, all in unity, it says. Then the glory, then the anointing. We're unified, but first we've got to recognize that this is available to those who believe, who are strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Oh, this is so much more than just praying you know, our Father, which art in heaven, that will be thy name. You know, there's so much more than, oh, I did my hour on Sunday morning. It's Christ in you. It's Jesus every day of the week. It's him crucified. Yes. And for he, his blood set us free. That's what our communion is. Once a, a month, we, uh, we can do it every day. We do communion because we identify with what, what was done at the cross. Yes, I'm forgiven. Yes, the blood was shed. It put me back into right standing with God. Yes, so nothing, no sickness and disease shall be on my body. And I identify with Christ. Christ in me and I'm in him. And together we are here 2024 to lay hands on the sick, to speak the glorious gospel, the good news to those that we are entrusted to speak it to. Amen. All right, in closing, I just want to share quickly, how do I protect myself because the identity thief is coming? It says, my son, this is Proverbs 4.20. And I'm going to finish this, even if I just read it. My son, attend to my words. Consent and submit to the sayings. What did I just share? I shared the word out of John 17. S attend to that. Make it your own. Just put it first place in your life. Consent and submit to the sayings. That means I'm not going to let go that I'm in Christ and he's in me. I'm not just some wretched sinner, wretched person, you know, way, you know, oh God have mercy. Yes, but we've got to move on from mercy to not sinning anymore and living the life of Christ. It is possible. It is available to all of us who believe. Let them not depart from your sight. Everything I read today, John 15, 4 to 7, you're in the branch, uh, you're the branch, you're hooked to the tree. John 17, he's pouring out his glory. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life. That's where the life is. It's in the word. The spirit and the word agree. I had, uh, was in, in the Second Chronicles, uh, where is that again? Second Chronicles uh, chapter 5, I believe it is, where they were all setting their instruments to play in unison, and they were supposed to identify and say one thing, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Guess what happened? The power came down. The glory, and that was the Old Testament. How much more if we stick with his word now? Not the baby goo goo gaga stuff, but the stuff that 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 uh, First Corinthians chapter 3 says, you know, I want to talk to you like spiritual men. Amen. For they are life to those that find them. What? The word and healing and health to all their flesh. Keep uh, your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard for out of it flows the springs of life or the spirit of God or the springs of living water. As he says, out of your belly, out of your spirit, man, will bubble the springs of life. You will say something your head might not even understand. It'll be from the spirit of God. And he says, protect that. Of all things, protect it. You're going to go home tonight. The devil's going to say, who do you think you are? You're not a pastor. You're not an evangelist. You're just a housewife. Or you're just a truck driver. And you're going to say, no, I'm an anointed truck driver. The spirit, don't you dare take that word out of my heart. The pastor read that Christ in me, I'm hooked to him. He's a, he's a, uh, the tree, I'm the branch. And he says that he gave me his glory. Now, when's the last time you said that? Put it on your fridge. Put it all over the place. Re-listen to this. It says, put away from you. Here's how you protect that anointing. So I'm doing this here more and more every day. Put away from you false and dishonest speech and willful and contrary talk. Put it away from you. Everything that says, oh, I'm no good. Or oh, everything that comes and lowers your standard from where Jesus said, now are you called sons of God. When he says, you're, you're called my brother. 
All right, put it away from you. Anything that is called dishonest speech. Let your eyes look right on with fixed purpose. What's your purpose? Well, I just want to hang on till Jesus comes. No, you're there to win the world. The devil should be afraid every time you get up in the morning. Every time he should be shuddering and saying, oh no, he's up. He's going to win more. He's going to deplete my camp. Amen. So it says, let your eyes look right with a fixed purpose and let your gaze be straight before you. I'm a son and a daughter of God. I go around doing good and the devil shakes in his boots. Consider well the path of your feet and let all your ways be established and ordered aright. What's the order right? That you stay on the path of holiness, that you stay on the highway of holiness, that you stay in praise and worship to our King. Turn not aside to the right hand or to the left. Remove not your feet from evil. And again, I could tell you about a, a thousand people, maybe that's exaggerating. I know a whole bunch that once served the Lord and they looked to the left, they looked to the right. Oh, this, the world looks kind of juicy right now and this guy's making more money and they left the cause of Christ only to find out there's nothing out there. It's all just uh, tinsel town. Anyways, that could share so much more. I quickly wanted to get in there. Read Proverbs chapter 4. In fact, Proverbs 4, 18 talks about the way of the transgressors hard. The way of the righteous gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And you're going to look and act like Jesus on this planet. Not by your own works, uh, what you have done, nor your own righteousness, but by what he did when he came into you. Christ in me, the hope of glory. If you have any more questions, call us at 250-862-3044. We would love to talk to you. Have an amazing rest of the day.